everyone, this is Julia from the Macedon Public Library and today uh, we've got a craft. It is making paper clay. So last week we made paper beads, if you're watching these in order. I know this is going on YouTube. Um, so again, I have lots of paper. Uh, most people do, lots of junk mail and catalog mailers and stuff. Anyway, so uh, we also have a shredder at home and looking at different videos and projects, what can I do? Um, I saw this uh, making clay, basically, you know, there's, um, and I know um, Shannon, one of our other clerks, uh, has made Play-Doh very early on, like how to do with flour and all of it, and some of cooking and things like that. So this is another way of, of kind of clay, like dough that you're using uh, paper from. And uh, so I guess I'm going to, um, first I'm going to walk you through it. I've got a slideshow, so I'll do that first, and then I will kind of show you, I'll turn the camera and move it down so you can see what I've what I have in front of me today. So I've already made the dough because um, it does take a little bit of, of pre-planning. So let me share my screen. And there's no sound. I don't need to worry about that. And start from the first slide. Okay, so here's making paper clay. So this is what I made. So I, I made the clay, I molded it, and this is it on one of my silks. Um, there's a video that I can show you. Um, I can also come back to this later. So there's a really good video on how to do this that I use. Um, it's Red Ted Art is the channel. Um, I would play it here, but I'm afraid it might also load an ad, and I don't want to do that with the library, <laughs> um, with recording it for the library. So, um, so the first step is obviously you get your paper. So you have, um, I have some in a little bowl here. Um, I have a, we have a paper shredder. I've been going through a lot of uh, old records of things, old files from years ago that have just been piling up. So I've been cleaning my office, shredded it up. If you don't have a shredder, that's okay. You can just uh, cut or, or with scissors, just break it down into as small pieces as you can. Uh, and then you wanna soak it overnight in enough water to cover. So this is what I said, like, we're not gonna be making it live because there's, there's this buildup. Actually, I would maybe even recommend letting it soak for not just overnight, but maybe like a whole day or a day and a half. Um, cause then it's more going to break up the pulp of, of the, the papers. Uh, so this is in my white bowl with my papers. Uh, and then what I did, this was the next day. So after it's been soaking, you want to, uh, even with the water in it, I used a stick blender. I've also in the past, cause I've also done recycled, like making paper with recycled paper. Um, you, uh, can just use a regular blender, like just a stand up blender. Um, but I do have a stick blender and I love my stick blender. So uh, this is what I used and I just, you just kind of turn the bowl and kind of mush the stick blender in and out and in and out back and forth and break it all up until it just becomes a real mush. Um, break it up until it becomes a yeah, wet and thick mixture. So I did not, um, so I, it soaked with water to the, above the paper. You keep all that water in there to help blend it better. And just keep going at it. And I just stopped every once in a while and took a picture. So, oh dear, I can't read the top of my screen. So you squeeze out all of the water at that point. Once you get it to a really good mush, you wanna just squeeze it out by hand, um, get all the water out of it as much as you can. Then I used a fine mesh strainer to help push, push it down into it to get as much water out of it as possible. You don't want it to be, it's gonna be damp, but you don't want it to be like dripping wet. You want it to be mostly dry. And this is when you're gonna add some flour to it. So flour and water can make a kind of paste. So that's the little bit of water that's still left in the paper uh, is gonna be blended with regular all-purpose flour. Um, and that will kind of make a bit of a glue to help make the dough or the, the clay for the paper. So I can't read it because I have Zoom stuff at the top. It's basically using all-purpose flour, I think, squeezing and kneading in as much of the flour as it seems necessary to hold it together. It's approximately one part flour to three parts pulp. So when I measured it, it was about three quarters of a cup with the paper that I started with um, after I pulled out all the water. So then a fourth of, three fourths of a cup of the pulp to a fourth of a cup of flour. And that's about what I did. I maybe added a little bit more. And then I also just added some regular table salt in it so that it could stay longer in the refrigerator. So if you make a whole bunch of it, like I just used a little bit, if you make a whole bunch of it, if this is something you wanted to make a bigger project, um, but that you're not going to get to it right away, or you're going to use it again and again, you can add in some salt and that will help kind of preserve it longer um, when you have it in the refrigerator. So 
um, I didn't, because of course my hands were messy with the flour and the, the paper, I wasn't getting to my camera to take pictures. So I didn't actually show, but it's just like if, if you, if you've kneaded dough or if you're making meatloaf and you're using your hands to get in there and squeeze it all together, that's the same kind of thing that you're doing as you're working the flour in to the paper. Um, and you just want to get it as uniform as you can because then that flour is going to help bind the paper together. Um, so at a certain point, I was just squeezing and squeezing and squeezing. When you can get a mold a little shape by hand and it's enough that can hold its shape, that's when you're done. And you could keep going more if you wanted, depending on if you wanted a thicker clay or a uh, looser clay. Um, but that's when I stopped. So once I was able to get to the little ball of um, the dough, then that's when it's like, okay, I'm done. I just put it all, all up in a ball like you're making a giant meatball. And I put it into a plastic bag and it says you can keep it for up to a month, again, depending upon if you've got the salt in there or whatever. Um, so there's all of that. And then I think probably a day or two later, um, I used a cookie cutter. We talked about cookie cutters before, having the right thing, uh, tools for the job. Um, I pressed it into a cookie cutter and that's how I got the heart shape. Um, you could also just freehand it. It's not going to be, it's not like a, a clay clay or a Play-Doh that's as smooth because of course it was paper pulp. I think if you let it soak in the water longer, it would break down even further or if you blended it longer. Um, mine is still kind of um, textured. So it's not gonna, you're not gonna be able to smooth it the same way that if you're making something with clay, you can get it really smooth and nice, um, a little shiny. You're not gonna get that with the paper. Um, that's just the nature of what it is. But when you get it in your shape, you just let it dry on an absorbent surface. I had a vegetable, like a, a I think it's, I had it on hand from ripening peaches last year um, that I got at Wegmans. So I just let it sit there until it air dries. And I think that's it. All right, so, so that was basically the process. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, turn the computer camera down and show you my work surface. I'll show you what the paper shreds were that I started with. I'll show you what I've got at the moment. We're gonna mold something and I'm gonna show you uh, at the end when it, when my thing dried, um, actually as it was drying, I was wetting it again because I was painting it with watercolor paint. So let me turn this down. All right, so I think that shows up fairly well. Okay, so this is just a little bit. I just got it from my paper shredder this morning. Um, I think I have like the cross cut kind of um, shredder. So it does make it into little pieces. Again, it doesn't have to be this small. The smaller it is, the better it will, the more surface area to break down. Um, so that's kind of what I started with. And then this is the ball that I took out of. Here's the, the plastic bag. Um, this is what I've left with right now, and it's 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 kind of dry and cracky a little bit. Like it went again. It's not like Play-Doh or like a smooth air dry clay that you can make a pot out of. Uh, it does kind of break apart, and you can see the fibers, which actually are pretty cool. Um, and the colors have all just melted together. But it feels really good to work with. Very tactile. Um, if, if you had if you had little ones, not the ones that are small enough that are going to put everything in their mouth. But if, they, if you just wanted a new experience for kids to work with, with their fingers, to, to do something different, they could make a little craft with or whatever. Um, it feels kind of nice. And it's just paper and water and flour and a little salt. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull some of this off. I went and scavenged through our cookie cutters and I got a nice flour, which will be important next week for me because I'm gonna have a, a another YouTube video talking about flowers. And also I have another one. This one is kind of interesting. So uh, I'm gonna, it's not like you with Play-Doh or cookie dough, you'd lay it out flat and then use the cookie cutter to kind of squish and get it out. With this, you're gonna wanna actually push it into the mold. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get the stem. Is this showing up? So I'm just pushing it down. And this is an old laminate table that we're using in our dining room, very old, that white with the gold mica flex in there, but it's great for doing crafts. Great as a sewing table because it gets really huge uh, for laying out patterns. So I'm just pushing it down really, really hard, getting it into those edges. 
And I don't think I'm going to try and do the stem bit because I'm not sure. I think that's too skinny. And I guess you could even let it dry in here for a bit. The more you press, the smoother it'll get. And it's nice and flat on that side. Pushing it through. Oh, well, there we have a little bit of a flower. Oh, maybe I can freehand a stem. But you can do anything that you want with it. I, I saw um, the Red Ted Art, which is the YouTube video that I used as an example that I, how I learned how to do this, um, then takes this and then uses a bowl as a form and you can make a bowl out of this and let it air dry and then you have like a paper bowl so you can keep keys in it. Again, it, the stuff does get really hard. Oh, so this is, this is the heart that I did. Let's see if it's showing up. This is the heart that I did before and then I just took my regular watercolor, oh, regular watercolor paints and a brush. Um, and then I kind of did pink with a reddish image or reddish outline and then purple on the back. And it's really hard and it's fairly light. So it's not really like a paperweight, um, but you could drill a hole. I guess you could even uh, push a hole in it if you wanted to. Um, initially, I was thinking really small ones and making beads out of them. You could pull, push a hole through it as before it's really dry um, so that you could put a, a cord through there. Um, but I mean, if you could put something in here so that you could hang or let dry um, like a fishing line or something, you could hang it in your window or I don't know, do anything with it. It is cool. And it's something that I had. So here I have my flower. I have a bit of a stem. And unfortunately, I don't have it on an absorbent paper at the moment. But there you go. Um, I think I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try and do this. I don't even know what this is supposed to be. Kind of a four, kind of a, well, I don't know. Geometry was never really my thing. It's a four sided object, but it's like squished. So I'm just pushing it and making sound effects, trying to get in there. And it really, it really is kind of a fun thing. What was I working with the other day that was weird? Was it the meringues, maybe? Um, that it was just a different sense to interact with. All right, let's see how this comes out. All right, so there's another one. Like, I don't know, maybe you could make this into a, like a person. You could put like a little circle for a head up here and put some little hands and some little feet. I don't know. Anyway, it's kind of a fun thing or not. Um, so that's kind of it. So now I have this paper clay that's available. Um, I still have, even that I didn't use that much, I still have another like a handful. I'm gonna put it back in the refrigerator. Maybe I'll think of something else to do with it. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's something. And it didn't cost a lot and uh, it, a quarter cup of flour basically is what it took. And then the paper that like from catalogs that I never asked for that still come to our house. Um, so, <laughs> so that's, so that's really, that's it for today. A uh, pretty quick program. Um, let me, actually, I can go back to that. Or if you just go to YouTube and if you search for Red Ted Art, R-E-D-T-E-D-A-R-T, -E -E um, has a really good video of showing you all the different steps of, um, of, as she does it, showing how long it takes to blend and whatever. Um, and then, there's also the video of how if you wanted to make that into a bowl, you can either do it like you turn the bowl upside down and you can cover the outside of the bowl with it and let it air dry. Uh, or you could put it on the inside of the bowl and press it down really well and let it air dry that way. Um, and then you can, she turns them, I think, into fruit. So I think one is like painted like a watermelon and the other one is an orange, maybe. I don't know. Um, it's kind of cool. Well, yeah, you can do anything you want. So uh, if you try it, I hope you enjoy it. And of course, we're always looking for pictures, but that's okay. No, no expectation. Um, and I guess that's it. So I hope you have a lovely day. Um, for me, it's a Friday. So also hope you have a good weekend. And I'll leave you there. Okay. Bye.